Hey folks, and welcome to Old Men's Gaming Den. Today we'll cover the tutorial for the game Mini Express, designed by Mark Garretts and published by Modeus Game Design. Uh, Mini Express is a game designed for one to five players, expected to be played in roughly 40 to 60 minutes. Uh, the one to two player versions are basically variants uh, that's used to accommodate that specific play account. The core game itself is really designed for three to five players. For this uh, tutorial, we'll have the game set up for a three player game, uh, but I'll quickly call out what the differences are between the three player and the four versus uh, five player setup. So it's, it's very minor in terms of the difference. It's only the setup. The game otherwise plays exactly the same way. And then at the very end of the video, we'll come back and have a, just a quick look at how the solo mode works and how the two player versions work as well. I will not go through the full details for those, but just give a quick sampler of how that uh, uh, basically plays out. So let's start by looking at the setup and how we are gonna accomplish that. So first of all, the game comes with this main uh, uh, game board. It comes with the sideboard that we see over there, the long one, and then it comes with this asset board right over here. So there are three different uh, boards that come with the game. Set them up uh, uh, in front of you. For the purposes of this gameplay, uh, now this board is double-sided. The other side has the map of uh, Europe. Uh, this side has the map of the US. We're using the map of the US for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, but choose whichever side you want and put that face up. Uh, once you've set all of these boards, uh, you will do a couple of things with each of these. So first of all, starting with the main play board, the game also comes with these different uh, tokens, uh, which tell you what sort of influence can be obtained once you build towards that. For now, don't worry about that particular function, but just uh, pick up all of these different tokens that come in it. Uh, hopefully the version that you have will come with the bag as well. Put all of them in the bag and then randomly draw one for each location uh, that has a city spot uh, printed on it. There are four starting locations, you will exclude those, uh, but for everywhere else where there is a city name, a number, and some sort of an artwork uh, showing the city in question, you will put down one of these randomly throughout. And once you're done with that, that will seed the different cities over there. Uh, there are four starting locations in each of the maps. So on the US side of things, that's Tallahassee, Wilmington, Baltimore, and Erie. Uh, each of these correspond to a specific color uh, for the trains. So pick out the corresponding color, take one of the uh, train tokens for those, and then set it up in these four different locations right there. Once you've done those couple of steps, you're ready with the setup for the main game board over here. We'll move on to the sideboard next. Looking at the sideboard over here, there's a couple of things you will quickly need to accomplish. First of all, uh, the game will come with these individual player pieces. Uh, there's going to be five of each of these. Uh, and because the game accommodates five players, uh, these are going to be available in five different colors. Because we're using a three player setup, we've chosen three of these colors uh, for the setup itself. Uh, take each of these markers, so four of them, uh, and put one for each column that you have over here where the value is shown as one. So that's going to be the starting spot for each of the players who are in the game itself. Uh, next up, you will take these different track locations and I'll quickly show what these look like. Uh, in this particular version, these look like these houses, basically. Uh, these represent the four different railway companies in the game. Just take all four of these and stack it where it shows zero on this particular track right here. Uh, and then once you're done with that, you're good with the setup for this sideboard over here. Uh, we'll move on to this asset board right over here. Uh, again, a couple of steps that need to be completed here. Uh, the game comes with a bunch of these stock certificates or share certificates or whatever you want to call it. Uh, take all of these. Uh, th again, there are four different colors for each of these. Take six of each color and put them on this board right over here on the spots designated for them. Uh, next up, take four different uh, tokens for each colored railway, put them out with the corresponding color. So brown stock certificates go with the brown trains, and then orange goes with orange, gray with gray, white with white, and so on. Uh, and then once you've set this up, you're done with the setup for this particular side of the board as well. There will be uh, three of each color left over. Put this aside for now. We'll come to this uh, very quickly in a minute. Uh, all the remaining railway tokens, just sort them by color, put them out on the side. Uh, there are going to be some additional uh, player pieces for these tracks uh, that obviously we're not using. So these are going to be moved on to the side as well. Uh, next up, uh, you will choose a start player and then assign the start player 
that starting player uh, marker and uh, they will basically be the start player for the purposes of gameplay. The game comes with these two different kind of tiles as well. And for the purposes of this setup, we're not going to be using this. Uh, this golden spike is for a variant that you can play. Uh, we're not going to be covering this in this tutorial. So uh, if you're playing the base game, you can move this to the side. And then uh, you have these tiles, which you can also exclude for now. Uh, this is if you're playing either the solo version or the two player version with the bot. So again, with the three player uh, or four or five player counts, we're not going to be using this. So these tiles, I'm, I'm just showing one as an example, but there's a few of these. These will move on to the side as well, and we're not going to be using these for purposes of gameplay. Uh, next up, once you've uh, got the first player marker assigned to a player, uh, in a three player game, you're going to take two of the remaining uh, shares in each color uh, and put it out like so. So I'm just removing one of these for the purposes of this setup. Uh, so in a three-player game, these are going to get discarded uh, back in the box. Uh, if you are playing a four or a five-player game, uh, these will remain in this setup right over here. So that's the key difference in setup between the three, four, and five-player counts. Uh, once you've got these set up, uh, going in a snaking order, starting with the first player, each player will choose a stock certificate that they want to start off with. So if I was the first player, uh, as an example, I might choose to keep this perhaps with me. Uh, the next player might choose something like this. Uh, perhaps the third player has gone and chosen the gray one. Uh, when it comes back to me, perhaps I chose the brown one. The second player chooses, let's say for example, perhaps this one. And then the last player chooses this one. So we all start off with two of these shares at the start of the game. Uh, when choosing shares, there are main two rules that you need to maintain. One, nobody can have duplicate of a specific color uh, at the very initial setup. So when I'm doing the drafting, and I, let's say, for example, if I had chosen one at the very start, I could not choose another one uh, as part of my initial setup. They must be different colors. And then the second rule you have to maintain is you cannot have the same combination of these as any other player. So the starting combination for each player must be unique. Uh, this uh, selection is going to be done, uh, as I mentioned, in a snaking order. So starting with the first player, going to the last, and then starting from the last player, going back to the third, uh, first. Uh, once you've done these setup, you will have, in a three-player game, two of these left over. Uh, once you've determined the color of the ones left over, so in this case we have gray that was not chosen, and then we have an orange one uh, that was not chosen. Uh, basically, we're going to bump up the value in this track for each of those. So gray moves up to one from zero, and then orange, which was the other one, moves up to one from zero. The other two will remain at zero at this particular point in time. And with that, we're pretty much ready with the setup of the game. So what exactly are you looking to do in a game of Mini Express? Uh, in this game, the key objective is uh, you want to own shares in different railway companies, have as much influence as possible in those companies, uh, so that at the end of the game, the shares give you the most value out of all the players in question. Uh, the way that that will work is, and maybe I'll quickly run through how end game scoring works. Hopefully that will make the actions you will take a little bit easier uh, uh, for you to relate to uh, the end game scoring itself. So at the end of the game, you will look at all the different shares that you own. So obviously you're starting off with two, uh, but you will acquire more of these over the course of the game, hopefully. So you will have multiple shares left over uh, with you at the end of the game. Then you will look at where you stand on the influence track compared to your competitors. So in this particular case, let's say if we were to evaluate the value of this white share, uh, white company share right over here. So let's say, for example, if I was the red player, perhaps red was here. Uh, perhaps gray is here and then perhaps purple is here. So when you're evaluating the value for this, the key thing that matters is your position in relation to others. So you're looking to see who has the most, second most or least influence on this particular track. So in this case, I have the second most influence on this track. And the next thing you would do is you would look at where this track marker for this particular railway company is. So in this case, perhaps this is sitting somewhere here on 10. Uh, what this now tells us is that whoever has the most influence in this company will score eight points for each share in that company that they have. Whoever has the second most influence will score six points for each share they have, and whoever and everybody else will basically score three points for each share they own in that company. For you to score any points for any shares that you have, you must have at least some influence. Uh, if you're at zero, uh, you will never score any uh influence in that company, regardless of how that relates to anyone else. So you must have at least a value of one or greater for that to count. So in this case, 
I'm second. So I will score six points for each share that I have in this company. Uh, and if I had this one uh, at the end of the game, this is gonna be worth six points for me at the end of the game. You will do basically the same math for every company, every share that you have, add up the points for all of those, and then whoever has the most points at that point is the winner. There is no interim scoring in the game, even though we do have point strike that goes around. You'll basically be using it just at the very end of the game. Uh, and the one marker that you will have left over uh, after you have put these out, because there are four of these over here, um, you can just keep this in front of you. This is meant to keep track of the points, but honestly, you can just keep this in front of you as a reminder of which player owns which color, because uh, you'll only be using it to make the to add up the score at the very end of the game. So hopefully, now if that makes sense in terms of how you're scoring points at the end of the game, let's have a look at the actions you're doing and what exactly you want to do. So in this game, you will uh, basically do one of two different kind of actions and you must always do an action. Passing is not an option. Uh, the first action that you can do is buying a stock certificate from over here. The way that that will work is uh, whenever you want to buy a stock certificate, you will choose the company you want to buy the stock certificate from. So let's say, for example, I'll, I might go to Orange and say I want to buy this one. Uh, the cost of buying this is always going to be denoted by the number of these real uh, train tokens that you have in the asset board at that point in time, because this is a number that will vary over the course of the game. So right now, let's say there is four of these. Uh, it is possible for there to be zero, uh, so no trains in there. It, uh, it is also possible for there to be a maximum of five, which is the max that you can have over here. And this is a reminder of that maximum uh, printed right on there. So that is going to be the cost that you will pay for that buying that particular share. And you will pay that cost from deducting from the influence you have in that company. So if I wanted to buy this, I need to pay four influence on the orange track. And then let's say, for example, perhaps uh, when I make that decision, I'm sitting at seven. So I'll basically pick this up. I will uh, bump this down by four. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going from seven to three. Uh, and four again is the cost uh, shown by the number of train tokens that you have left over here. Uh, and that's basically how you would buy shares. Uh, after you've purchased the share in that company, you will take uh, up to three train tokens from the general supply and you will add it up here, up to a maximum of five. So in this case, uh, because there's already four here, I could only do one because uh, I can go up to a max of five. But of course, if I had less, so let's say if I had uh, only three, one over here, uh, I would have paid a cost of one on the influence track, and then I would add three to bring this to a total of four in that instance. Uh, that is basically buying a stock action over the course of the game. Before we move on to the second action, I want to explain a quick concept around uh, what's called stock depletion. And that is basically when you're not able to buy the share in a specific company. This can happen in one of two ways. First, uh, if you've purchased the last share in a given company, uh, that of course depletes the available shares in that company. So you're no longer uh, yourself or any other player, you're, nobody will be able to buy shares in that company moving forward. Whenever that happens, uh, just take, if there are any train tokens uh, remaining in the general supply, which there would be at this point, some at least, uh, you're just gonna move this aside uh, because nobody's gonna be able to bring uh, do a purchase action to bring train tokens from there uh, to over here, so they will go out. But if you have any remaining train tokens left here, uh, they will still remain there, but you won't have new ones coming in from the general supply uh, to replenish this particular spot. Uh, so that's one way that stock can deplete. The second way in which the stock depletion can take place is if you actually run out of trains in the general supply. So again, it is possible that you might have some train tokens left over here, but if you run out of train tokens in the general supply, that will also trigger a stock depletion. So in this case, if we run out of orange, uh, whatever number of shares you have left over here will be removed from the game, uh, and nobody's gonna be able to purchase shares in those company for the rest of the game uh, moving forward. So keep that in mind uh, as you look at how you may not be able to buy shares in specific companies. Uh, so that's the that's the first action and we cover stock depletion. The second action that you can do is laying down a track. And this is where uh, a lot of the meat of the game basically resides. So whenever you're laying down a track, you will basically choose the company that you want to lay down the track for. This may be a company that you have shares in. It may also be a company that you don't have shares in. So uh, you can lay down tracks for any company you want as long as you can do a legal move with it. The way that that will work is uh, you will choose a position you want to start off with. So that's going to be a spot where there's an existing uh, 
train token for that particular company. You will lay down tracks with the number of train tokens that are left over here for that specific color. And you must always connect to another city when you're laying down tracks. So there is no such thing as laying down a couple of tracks just in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you must always have a starting destination, which can be a city or it can be from a, a midpoint from a path that is going across, but it must always end in another city. A few other rules that you have to keep in mind is that it must be the shortest path to the city that you're looking to build to. Uh, so basically it must be the most effective one. You cannot take the longer path just with the objective of laying down more tracks. That is not allowed. Uh, you cannot go through a city to another. Obviously, as soon as you get to a city where uh, you've created a new connection, you must stop at that particular point. Uh, so you must also keep that in mind. So let's look at a quick example of how that might work. So let's say if I wanted to build the, the gray track starting from Wilmington, and let's say, for example, perhaps I wanted to build towards uh, Atlanta over there. So easy example. Uh, the way that that will work is uh, if you look at how this is spaced out, and there's a space of one hex in between these two uh, before you get to that. So if I build this, I would need to take two of these because that would be the shortest path for me to connect to this. Now, obviously, I can connect uh, with this here first and then go there, or I can connect with here first and then go there. They're both fine. But what I cannot do is go here first, then build another one there and then build another one there. You're still connecting, but obviously this is an inefficient way of getting to that particular city. So that would not be a legal move. So this is what you might uh, basically connect it uh, as. Once you've done that, uh, the next thing you will do is if the city that you've connected to, uh, obviously for you to be able to go in there, these tokens must still be on it. Uh, so let's cover what these tokens do and how that works. So these tokens basically tell you that once you build a connection to a specific city, uh, which company you will gain an influence in. And that is how you gain influence over the course of the game. So you spend influence when you buy shares and you gain influence when you connect to different cities that give you influence based on these tokens right over here. So in this case, if we connect to Atlanta that had uh, this uh, right over there, we would move up one on the white track and then one on the gray track. So uh, let's bump all of these down. Uh, let's say we were about to start off the game at this particular point. Uh, so if we connect to this one on white, one on gray, uh, and if I'm the red player, so I'll go from one to two, and then I will go from one to two here. Uh, and I basically bump myself up on those two tracks. Uh, the next thing that you will check is uh, the value for each of those cities. Now, each of these cities on the board have a value of either one or two or three. Uh, that basically says how many different railway companies can connect to that particular city. So in this case, Atlanta has a value of three. So this is only the first uh, company a railway company that has built a train track in there, uh, two more companies can still go in and do that action. Uh, however, if two companies had already been in there, so we're gonna, let's say, put these two out. And again, I'm, I, uh, obviously we've not built the other train tracks here, but just imagine uh, they are connecting uh, on it. As soon as we do this and we build that over here, uh, we would take this benefit uh, we would see that this has a max value of three, which has now been reached. And then this is then discarded uh, from the game. And uh, the fourth company that would be left over can no longer build or connect to that city at that point. Uh, so that's how you're gonna build to a city when you do that action. Uh, now, obviously in this example, we also saw how you may go to a spot where there is another uh, railway company uh, track that's already laid out. If that happens anytime over the course of the game, so you're connecting to another city, uh, just take one train token for the uh, other company and put it on this asset board over here. So if orange were already there and we connected to it, uh, we would take an orange token from the general supply and put it down on the asset board. Again, respecting the rule of the maximum of five that can be in here. Uh, so again, uh, laying down a track action, take the shortest path, go to the city in question, uh, take the influence noted by that, what's in there, check for how much influences, uh, how many railway companies can connect to it. If the cap has been uh, reached, remove this. If it has not been, then keep it there. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to adjust this based on how many spaces we've moved over here. So to do that, you will look at how many uh, spaces you've covered or you've laid down tracks on that are not on a city location. So in this case, uh, it's just one because we went through one spot and then we were able to get to a city. So we will move 
the dark gray crag up by one in the on this particular crag here and that is how the value of the company will appreciate over the course of the game uh, basically by laying down the tracks on the different locations right over here uh, so that's basically your key second action now, of course if on a future turn you want to connect to a city that is right adjacent uh, to it so there's no hex in between uh, you will just basically go right over there do the action as we had looked at it but of course because we, you're not putting down a new track on an empty spot, on a non-city spot, uh, this is not gonna move up uh, at that particular point in time. So that's pretty much it uh, when you're doing sort of like uh, uh, over here, uh, this is where sort of like a, a lot of the meat of the game basically resides. Uh, and you'll be doing a lot of these actions uh, to basically appreciate the value of the company uh, over here, gain influence in those companies, uh, which hopefully you will then be able to convert uh, into purchasing different stocks right over here. So key concepts to keep in mind, uh, you will lay down tracks, gain influence from these tokens, which allow you to move up over here. This is your influence in those companies. Uh, this becomes your currency when you want to buy share certificates from over here. Uh, and then the number of spots that you would cover from these different train tokens will generally contribute to this track, which uh, lets you know what the value of each share for each of these companies will be uh, at the end of the game when you score. A uh, couple of quick housekeeping items that I'll point out. Uh, it is possible when you're doing a purchase share action uh, that there may not be any uh, railway tokens in here because somebody might have laid down tokens to get to a spot that used at the very last one. In that case, uh, if the next person, so let's say if there was nothing in here and I wanted to do a purchase action for this city, uh, for this company, uh, this is actually gonna be a free action. So I can just basically, uh, not a free action rather, this is actually gonna be, a uh, the cost is gonna be free. I can basically just take this token, put it up in front of me. The cost is zero because there are no railway tokens in here. Uh, and then I would replenish three from uh, the general supply onto the asset board like so. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously, as you do these moves, uh, you have to ensure that the moves are legal and they're possible. So when you're connecting, uh, when you're building out from a path and connecting to different cities, there must be sufficient train tokens in here for you to be able to do that. Uh, obviously, if I wanted to connect from, let's say, for example, here to here, and if there is no grain, uh, dark gray tokens left over here, that would not be legal action that I can take at that point. So I would have to lay down tracks for a different company or buy a share in that company at that particular point in time. Uh, and with that, that's pretty much it. Now, uh, the end game will be triggered whenever two of uh, uh, two of these companies will go through stock depletion. So let's say, for example, if uh, Gray over the course of the game had all of his shares depleted, and then uh, the game keeps on continuing at that point, you continue as normal. Uh, and then Orange perhaps has all of his shares run out or it goes to stock depletion as well. As soon as a second company has run out of all stocks that can be bought, uh, you will finish that round and then move on to end game scoring. So that's where the first player marker basically comes in handy because uh, the player to the left of the first player will be the player to take the very last action in the game. Uh, and this acts as a good reminder for it. Uh, and then with that, that pretty much is it at that point. So we've already gone through the end game scoring. Uh, once you've done, uh, 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 once you've gone through the two of those stock depletions, you will uh, determine the value of each of the shares for those companies, determine the value that you have as per what we had described earlier, out of the values, and then whoever has the most points at that stage wins. Now, at the start of the game, we had said that the game also comes with a few different variants for one players and two players. So let's have a quick look at how those work. I'm not going to go through the full teach or setup for those different uh, items, but once you're comfortable with the base game, uh, hopefully you can dig into the rule book and pick up some of those things for yourself. But I quickly wanted to give you a sense of what those are. So if you're playing the solo game, uh, basically you'll be playing with the bot uh, that comes or the AI that comes in the game. These would be represented by uh, these kind of tokens uh, in the game itself. So uh, basically at that point, you're playing against an AI opponent uh, at that stage. Uh, you can also adjust the difficulty when you're playing solo. So as you can see here, there's a difficulty setting uh, right over there. So you can adjust it based on if you want something that's a bit more challenging or something that's a bit more uh, of an easier playthrough, perhaps for you to learn the game for uh, the first time that you're playing. Uh, there are two different versions for the two player game that you can use. Uh, the first one, is with the AI bot as well. So basically you're playing with the AI third player in that instance. Uh, so 
if that's something that seems of interest to you, you can definitely give that a go if you're playing with two players. Uh, the one that I personally favor a little bit is the expert game for two players, and this does not use the AI bot. Uh, the setup here is a little bit different. So you'll start off with the uh, different companies' uh, shares, uh, and the way that you will split up the shares is a little different in this particular setup. And also when you're taking actions, each player gets to take two actions uh, on their turn. So it makes uh, the action a little bit more meaningful and meatier uh, when it is on your turn. And this is probably the one that I would recommend uh, if you're looking to do get a, a two-player game out of this, simply because I generally prefer to play without the AI bot, especially if it is a two-player game. Uh, but uh, there are two options in there, so choose the one that you think appeals to you the most. Uh, the game also comes with variant rules based on the maps in question. Uh, so if you remember, we had looked at the Golden Spike uh, tile at the very start of the game. So that variant is used for the USA map. So if you want to get into that, uh, you can have a quick look at how the gameplay uh, for that is a little bit different. Uh, and of course, you have the harbor variant set up on the other side, which is specific to the Europe map. So you can try that uh, out as well. Uh, definitely quite a few variability options with the game uh, if you want to try it out. Uh, and you can definitely play this with more player counts than you would normally get in a railway company of this type. Because uh, most of the others like Irish Cage, Ride the Rails, uh, Mini Express, uh, sorry not Mini Express, uh, Mini Rails, uh, they do require at least three players. So it's nice that they put in the time and the effort to design uh, variants for one and two players. So with that, that pretty much is uh, the rules for Mini Express. Hopefully you guys uh, like the teach uh, and it helped you learn the game. Uh, I hope you do give it a go because I have played it before and I do like it. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the game as well if you give it a try. Uh, in the meanwhile, if you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And uh, take care and I'll see you in the next one.